On this episode, I wear a t-shirt. Sorry, mom. Hey everybody, and welcome to Finish Friday, the show that helps more creative people change more lives. I'm your host, Todd B. from Tennessee, and I created this show because on a scale of one to not revealing the title of your book just yet, creating things is hard, and finishing those things is often even harder. You guys, I gotta tell you, I am, I'm pumped. I am pumped about the book. It comes out November 9th, and I can't quite tell you the title yet. Oh, I could. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you the title just yet. I know you're going to love the book. I, I'm amped uh, about everything about it, and uh, I'm excited to get it out the door. It's been a long time coming. That's literally the only thing that's been happening in my life this week. Uh, the wife is in Ireland, and so it's just been me and, and the book and going crazy and the dog running around sometimes. So that's pretty much it for that. So let's get into today's topic. The other day, I was headed back from the chiropractor up in Nashville. I was driving west to get back to my home. And you know those sections of the interstate where you have to merge on and someone else has to merge off within the span of like 10 seconds or less than that? Yeah, those are obnoxious. And so I'm coming up on one of those and I see a red car way back there in my rear view mirror. And so you know the deal, like you're looking, you're trying to figure out what the strategy is. And so for me, I took the strategy. I'm like, I'm going to slow it down. I'm gonna back it up and I'm just gonna slide right in behind this girl. And I keep trying to slow down and she just never gets up to my speed, but like my body can't change its mind apparently because my brain has already decided I'm gonna slow down. And I'm sitting here looking at this car and I'm thinking, why is she so timid? Why is she so slow? And the car pulls up beside me and I see a massive dent in the side of this car, like the whole passenger side is crumpled in. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, man, you know what? I might be a little bit timid too. And I got to thinking about that and how that happens in, in our own selves and in our art. Because what happens is when we get smashed like that, when we get hit, it's a very real reaction. And so the next time that we have the opportunity to put ourselves out there or to figure out where we might fit in the artistic world, we're gonna shy away from that a little bit. And so I got a couple things for you that I wanna talk about today. The first is to identify that fear, right? So like look back and figure out where it not went wrong, but where the impact was. Back in the day when I was in choir, there was a point where I did not get accepted for this particular audition. And that sat with me for a really long time. But the second part of this model is you gotta keep going anyways. Because the thing about art is that it can't be bad. What you're doing cannot be bad. Well, it maybe can be a little bad, but in reality, it just hasn't gotten in front of the right audience yet. So I want you to keep that in mind. I know everybody who's been in this game long enough has a little bit of a sting, has a little bit of a fear, and that's a real thing, but we need to identify that fear, and then we need to move on past it. So this week, I wanna encourage you. I know you're gonna feel pain. I know that still hurts really bad, and then I need you to get up, and I need you to make art anyways. All right, I wonder if I can do this. So we're uh, we're all Halloweened out at this house. Definitely in full swing, full expectation for that. We live like right on Main Street out here. And so the scene for Halloween is insane. There are so many kids lining up at the door. And I don't think that we've ever had enough candy to actually keep up with all of them that come in. So I, I'm, I'm totally stoked about that. Today's question of the week comes in from someone who wants to be anonymous, actually, and I think it's going to be obvious why in a second. It says, my struggle right now is finding good clients who are willing to pay fair rates who aren't actually broke. And so you see why this person wants to be anonymous, right? But the deal is, so, so here's what I would do, anonymous, the very, 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 very 
very first thing I would do before I did anything else is I would make sure that my work was up to par with what people expect it to be. And that's not the answer I would have given even a year ago because like I I wanted the money and that's the thing like when we're artists we we just want to be paid for our work so that we can keep making what it is we want to make and doing what it is we want to do. But the thing is like being in that environment and being your own boss or even being a freelancer, that takes a lot of work and, and it's hard to make a living at that level. And the first thing you have to do is make sure your work is worth paying you enough to justify making that living. Because if you can't like look inside yourself and be honest with yourself about where you are on the scale of professionalism and the scale of what people expect and value, then you're not gonna get paid what you need to get paid no matter what. And so the second thing I would do is definitely take a look at, at the relationship in general. So one of the big pitfalls that, that people who try to go freelance in this entrepreneur crazy world is you're not ready for it. The second thing is you cling to the first customers you get because you're too, I don't know, you, you want them. You think they love you. But if they're not giving you money, they don't love you. So the two things I would do if you're looking for clients and you can't find ones that are good is first, check and make sure your stuff is on point. And then second, be willing to cut that relationship if it's not going to pay off. I'm so excited for this week's Artist Spotlight, which goes on Saul LeWitt. This guy is a huge deal in the artist world. He's said to be the father of minimalism and things like that, but I'm not going to show you any of his art today. What I'm actually gonna pull out is something I found the other day that is a letter to another artist. This woman was feeling a lot of self-doubt about what it was she was doing, and so he wrote her this letter of encouragement and it is one that all artists should read again and again and again and it goes a little something like this. I go through a similar process every so often. I have an agonizing reappraisal of my work and change everything as much as possible and hate everything that I've ever done. I try to do something entirely different and better and maybe that kind of process is necessary to me, pushing me on and on. Maybe you need your agony to accomplish what you do. That piece was such a, just a relief to me, to be honest, because like there are times, even though I, I've been writing for three years now uh, on the internet and longer than that, in my own life, it's like you get to points where you just feel like everything you do is garbage. And it is, it, it's exactly that word that we just use, it's agony. It's agony to try and, and make stuff as well as the stuff that's in your mind. And so if you're going through that this week, I just wanna encourage you and remind you that you are not alone. It's not the end of the world if you feel agony over what it is you do. As a matter of fact, it's probably a prerequisite for what you do as an artist. So keep moving forward, keep pushing, and make better art in spite of the agony. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching episode 38. We've come a long way. And in every question, I ask the audience something. And this week, it's going to be, what are you reading right now? Pop your answer down in the comments below. I always love book recommendations, and I can't wait to see what you guys are pouring over these days. Thanks so much for watching. Again, I'm Todd B from Tennessee, and I will talk with you next week.